Welcome to Canopy. This window here is called the Python window. More correctly, we're using a shell called IPython. To get started, just ask Python to do some arithmetic. 2 plus 2, for example, into the input box. The output box shows 4. Now, if you type 2 divided by 4, you'll notice the output box shows 0. The reason is, is because of data types. And when we type in the number 2, this is an integer data type. If we want a floating point data type, we type in the number 2.0. So to do division correctly, 2.0 divided by 4.0, that will give us the correct answer of 0 0.5. So a key idea you want to remember is always make sure when you're doing calculational type stuff to use floating point numbers. Python is much like a calculator, so let's do the square root of 10. And you'll notice right here that documentation pops up telling me how to use this function. And when I close the parenthesis, that goes away. And you'll notice that it converted this to a floating point number. But what I always like to do is, if I'm going to do floating points, make sure that I'm doing float point, floating points as I've shown here. Now, let's suppose we want the sine of 45 degrees. If I type in sine 45, I get 0.85, and I should get 0 0.707. And what's going on here, if we type in sine, if we look at the documentation, the angle has to be in radians. So let's go ahead and convert 45 degrees to radians. So I'll erase that. So we have 45 degrees times 2, and I'm going to make that 2.0 times pi over 360 degrees for 2 pi radians. And I'll go ahead and convert that to floating point. And so I see that 45 degrees in radians is 0.785. Let's try this now, sine of 0.785. And indeed, we get a answer of 0 0.707. Now, let's suppose we want more digits. I'm going to define an angle, and I'm going to call this angle theta. So theta will equal 45 degrees times 2 pi divided by 360 degrees. And if I want to see the value of theta, I just type that. And now I do this, sine of theta. And I get more digits of accuracy because my angle was calculated exactly. Here's another useful trick. If I use the up arrow, I start getting everything that I've entered. So I can enter something and edit it instead of re-entering the line. And let's suppose I took this calculation, and let's suppose I type the variable theta with a capital T. Let's see what's going to happen. And what you see here is we've got an error, and Python is telling us that the name theta is not defined. And what's going on here is Python is case sensitive. And this means that it distinguishes between capital letters and lowercase letters. So in particular, theta and capital theta are two different variables. And if I type this wrong, Python won't know what the value of the variable is. Now, let's suppose I want to calculate area of a circle. I'll start by saying the diameter is 1.5 meters. And let's see if Python's got that correct. It does. And so let me try pi times diameter. And Python multiplies that out for me. Now let's go pi times diameter squared. And I get a mistake here. And what is happening is it's telling me that this operator right here is unknown to Python. And so what I have to do is pi times diameter, and you use this uh, double asterisk to indicate a 
y to the x, in this case diameter raised to the uh, second power. So I can see I've got a value of that, and so I can find an area as pi times diameter squared. And like all software, this will do order of operations. It knows, the program knows to do this calculation first before multiplying by pi. So let's hit return on that. And there's pi times diameter squared. And so if I want area, oh, let me just use the arrow key. There it is. I now have to divide by 4. And so the, there's the area of a circle with a diameter of 1.5 meters, and this area would be in uh, meters squared. Now let's start putting some labels on this. So I'm going to bring up the last command, and I'm going to type area and create a variable called area. And if I want to see the answer, I just type area, and I see the answer. And now I'm going to introduce the print statement. And I can do this, print area, and Python will print back the area. And next I'm going to do this, print, and I'm going to use the quotations like that, and then type in area. And I see that I got a syntax error. This happens a lot, so let me bring that command back up. And I need a comma right there. And now Python's telling me the area is 1.767. And let me modify that and make that even a little bit better. And I'm going to put on units. So this is meters squared. And so now Python has written the area is 1.77 meters squared. I've got the name of the uh, physical property I'm calculating, the value of it, and the units. And what I introduced here is the concept of a string variable. And there's two ways to enter string variables. I can use a single quotation like this, or I can use a double quotation like this. But if I type this without a quotation, I'm going to get a error. One of the most useful things you can do with Python is learning by doing experiments. So, for example, what happens if I mix data types? So I'm going to take 2.0 divided by 5. So I've mixed a floating point with an integer. And I can see that Python gave me a floating point value back. And this is the correct number. Another example of an experiment. What happens if I try this? Print 2 times 2. Wow, Python just gave me the value. And let's suppose I modify that. Print 2 by uh, print product equals, and I'm using a space so the output looks nice. I remember the comma this time. And I'm going to do 2 times 2. Oh, the product is 4. And suppose then I change one of those to a floating point number. And I see that Python gives me a floating point value out. So that's called learning by experiment. I use that idea in all programming that I do.